good morning students so today our topic will be about the modes of pollination and we will be studying about self pollination first we will be studying about what what is pollination then what are the different types of pollination and then we will be covering in this topic that what are the different mechanisms of self and cross pollination okay so we will start the today's topic first is pollination what is exactly before going into the details of modes of pollination you should know that what is exactly pollination you should know the definition of pollination and what is the mechanism of pollination and what are the various modes of pollination that you should know very well so the pollination means transfer of pollen grains from anthers to the stigma of a flower is called as pollination okay so whenever the anthers are transferred from the The, when the pollen grains are transferred from the anthers to the stigma of a flower it can be on the same flower or it can be on the different flowers that process is called as or that 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 mechanism is called as pollination okay so again we will repeat the transfer of pollen grains from anthers to the stigma is of a flower is called as pollination pollen grains are transferred by wind water or insects so there can be different mechanisms or the modes of pollination it can be through wind that is called as anemophily it can be through water that is called as hydrophily or it can be through insect that is called as zoophily okay so these are the different modes of pollination if the pollen if the pollen grains they land on the stigma of the same flower okay so if the transfer of the pollen grains take, takes place from the anthers to the stigma that is on the same flower that is called as self pollination because the transfer of pollen grains is taking from one from the anthers of one flower on the same flower on the stigma of the same flower so that process is called as self pollination but if the transfer of pollen grains takes place from anthers of one flower to the stigmas of another flower so that is called as cross pollination okay because the two different flowers are involved in this process so these are the two different modes of pollination that is self pollination where a single flower is involved in the transfer of pollen grains whereas in cross pollination two different flowers are involved in transfer of pollen grains now here again in the slide you will see that through diagrammatic view i have told you i have explained with you that the different modes of pollination self pollination what happens here in self pollination is transfer of pollen grains within one flower only so here only one flower is involved in the pollination process and pollen grains from the anther are transferred on to the stigma so pollen grains they, from the anthers they are transferred on to the stigma of same flower here it is taking place the transfer of pollen grains is taking place from the anthers to the stigma of the same flower here see you can see so the plant a is only involved in the pollination that is this process is called as self pollination but plant b is not involved in this process so this is called so pollen located on the stem and moves on the still on the pistil of the same plant here you can see the underlying word same plant second is cross pollination the transfer of pollen from the flower of one plant to the flower of a plant having the different genetic constitution here in cross pollination as i have told you that two different flowers are involved in the transfer of pollen grains so the two different plants will have the different genetic constitution the genetic constitution of the two different plants will be altogether different because the two different flowers are involved and there can be different modes of pollination either through wind or water or insect so there are different mechanisms of the modes of pollination also in cross pollination but so self pollination is a simpler Uh, pollination uh, uh, way whereas cross pollination is a more complicated way where the different factors are involved in pollination process now we will see that what are the different modes of pollination okay autogamy here self pollination as we have studied in the earlier slides that what is self pollination that we already know now now the another name of self pollination is autogamy okay so the another name of self pollination is autogamy we can say self pollination as autogamy also so it is a development of seed by self pollination so whenever the development of seed takes place through self pollination mode that is called as autogamy okay so the development of seed by self pollination that is called as autogamy and what are the various several mechanisms which are involved in autogamy is or in the self pollination is these are the these are listed below the different mechanisms that promote self pollination okay so these are the mechanisms which promote directly or indirectly they promote self pollination okay and uh, now these are listed below and we will be studying in details uh, in the in the coming slides okay so the first mechanism that uh, promotes self pollination is bisexuality 
so bisexuality is a mechanism which promotes self pollination whereas the second process is homogamy homogamy is also another mechanism which promotes self pollination in plants cleistogamy is also an, is a mechanism is a type of mechanism uh, which promotes self pollination in flowering plants and the fourth one is chiasmogamy so these are the different mechanisms that promote self pollination or it's autogamy that is the development of the seed by self pollination in flowering plants we will be studying a point by point in details in the in the coming slides second process allogamy so like we have seen that the development of seed through self pollination that process is called as an autogamy similarly development of seed by cross pollination whenever the development of seed takes place by the cross pollination mechanism so that process is called as allogamy allo means different so the two plants are involved here and having the different genetic constitution the two different plants will have the all together different genetic constitution okay so first plant can be capital a a small other plant can be capital a small a so the constitution that is heterozygous these are the two different heterozygous plants which are involved in cross pollination mechanism and similarly in autogamy that we have seen the whatever the mechanisms which are involved which promote self pollination like bisexuality homogamy chiasmogamy cleistogamy similarly there are certain mechanisms which promote cross pollination in cross pollinated crops so the what are the different mechanism first is diclemy second one is dicogamy heterostyly hercogamy self incompatibility and male sterility so these are the six mechanisms that promote allogamy or cross pollination in the flowering plants now before going into the detail of these point by point the various mechanisms we have we have we should have the knowledge of the by uh, we should have the knowledge of a perfect flower exactly what is a perfect flower what is a hermaphrodite what is a bisexual bisexuality condition what is a unisexuality condition so before in before going into the detail we should know about the floral biology of the flowering plant okay so here i will explain you about the floral biology of a perfect flower now the, there are two terms involved in biology that bisexual bisexual flowers and unisexual flowers so there are these these are the two terms first is bisexual flowers and second one is unisexual flowers bisexual flowers are also called as perfect flowers or they are also called as hermaphrodite flowers because they have all the reproductive parts present in the same flower only like the reproductive parts like bisexuality or the perfect flowers they have both androecium means that perfect flower or the bisexual flower will have the male part as well as the female part then it will have the petals sepals and ovary style stigma all these flower all these flowering parts or the reproductive parts of a plant or the flower will be present in the same flower so that flower is called as a perfect flower okay and all the plants all the parts reproductive parts are functioning functional condition they are in the functional condition okay so a bisexual the definition will be bisexual or a perfect flower they have both male the male part is androecium and the female that is gynoecium reproductive structures because these are the reproductive structures including the stamens and an ovary so a perfect flower will have androecium gynoecium stamens and ovary so all these parts are present in the same flower so that flower is also called as bisexual flower or the perfect flower or it can also be said as hermaphrodite flower so flowers that contain both androecium and gynoecium is called as hermaphrodite flowers okay so they should have male male part and female part so the male part in flowering plant is androecium and the female part is called as gynoecium okay examples of plants of bisexual flowers are lily and roses in these plants there are bisexuality bisexuality is a condition which is present in these plants a complete flower is a perfect flower with petals and sepals okay so a perfect flowers will have sepals petals stamens carpels ovary stamens ovules stigma style androecium gynoecium everything it should uh, all the parts or reproductive parts are present in that flower and in the perfect functional condition that flower is called as hermaphrodite or a bisexual flower or a perfect flower so these are the various different names of those plants now first condition we have seen that is bisexuality condition now the second condition is unisexuality so what are the green unisexual flowers this term will also come when you will go into the detail of biology or we'll go into the detail of plant breeding that what are the unisexual flowers and so you should have the knowledge about the unisexual and the bisexuality conditions present in the flowering plants 
the unisexual plants are what reproductive they are the plants where the reproductive structures that is they are either functionally male or they are functionally female so either of them will be functional either the male will be functional that is endosium will be functional or the female will be functional that is the gynoecium part will be functional so either the endosium will be functional or the gynoecium will be functional either the male part or the female part will be functional so that condition is known as an imperfect flower or the incomplete flower or we can also say them as unisexual flower so this is a perfect explanation of the biology of a perfect flower now we will go into the modes of pollination that that was the main topic of ours so mode of pollination what is the process by which the pollen grains are transferred from anthers to stigma is called as pollination so this definition i have already told you that the definition the perfect definition of pollination is the process of the process by which the pollen grains are transferred from anthers to the stigma they are called as pollination it can be of two types autogamy or self pollination or the other one is allogamy or cross pollination okay so autogamy is again the same definition you have to remember the transfer of pollen grains from the anthers to the stigma of the same flower is called as autogamy or the self pollination and autogamy is the closest form of inbreeding this you have to remember that it is a closest form of inbreeding because there is no heterozygosity involved in the process of self pollination whatever will be the genetic constitution of the parent plant the progeny will also will having the same genetic constitution okay because because generation after generation there will be no change in the genetic constitution of the plants because the because the parents are the same here here the inbreeding here uh, there will be no level of heterozygosity present and and we can also say that autogamy leads to homozygosity okay all the plants will have of the population all the plants in the population will have the same genetic constitution they will have the same genetic constitution now we will see the into the details as i have listed in the earlier slides that what are the various mechanisms that promote autogamy uh, or self pollination now we will study them point by point in detail first point is bisexuality so this was the first mechanism that promotes self pollination in flowering plants so bisexuality is what presence of male and female organs in the same flower is called as bisexuality so if male and the female flowers are present in the same flowers so that process is called as bisexuality the presence of the bisexual flower is a must and for the bisexuality to occur the presence of a bisexual flower that means we have studied the bisexual flowers what are the bisexual flowers they have all the androecium the gynoecium the stamens carpels ovary sepals petals all the parts are present in the perfect functional condition so for a bisexuality condition there has to be a bisexual flowers present and in turn they promote self pollination so it's a mechanism it's a first mechanism that prom that promotes self pollination and the second point is homogamy here the word only suggests homo that means maturation of anthers here the anthers and stigma of a flower the mature at the same time okay so the maturation time of the male and the female reproductive parts of a flowering plant they are the same homogamy means maturation at the same time when when the male part and the female part matures at the same time so this process in turn favors self pollination or the autogamy so the development of the seed will takes place through self pollination only cleistogamy the third third mechanism that promotes uh, self pollination is cleistogamy so when pollination and fertilization occur in open unopened flower bud okay so cleistogamy is a very important condition in which the pollination takes place in an unopened flower bud where the flower bud is not open it is closed only okay so whenever the flower bud is closed and the pollination takes place inside the flower only without opening the flower bud so that condition is known as cleistogamy you have to remember these terms because okay so because these are the various uh, important modes or the mechanisms of that promote self pollination so when the pollination and fertilization takes place in an unopened flower bud if this condition is known as cleistogamy it ensures self pollination and prevents cross pollination okay so this is very important so because the pollination and fertilization taking place is taking place inside the unopened flower bud so in turn it is promoting self pollination and it is preventing the cross pollination no outside source can come inside the flower to promote cross pollination okay so the cross pollination cannot happen and the only mode of reproduction in that plant will be through 
cell pollination only. Some of the varieties of some of the examples we can say is that some of the varieties of wheat, barley, oats, and several other grass species. So cleistogamy happens in these particular species where the pollination and fertilization taking place inside the unopened flower bud only. Now the fourth. The mechanism that promotes self pollination or autogamy is chasmogamy. So chasmogamy is another mechanism that promotes self pollination. What happens in chasmogamy is now we will go into the detail. Opening of flowers only after the completion of the pollination. Okay, so the flowers open only when the pollination has already taken place. Taken place means the pollination has already taken place inside the flowers. That condition is known as chasmogamy. Okay. the flower will open only after the pollination has already taken place taken place inside it okay so that condition is known as chasmogamy this promotes self pollination okay obviously whenever the pollination is taking place inside the same flower only okay so the anth or the pollen grains are transferring from the same flower into the into one flower is only involved in this so obviously the mechanism will be self pollination only and the crops this type of mechanism is found in crops like wheat barley and rice and oats so these are the perfect example of chasmogamy and the last mechanism that promotes self pollination is position of anthers okay in some of the species what happens the stigmas are surrounded by anthers okay the the stigmas whatever the stigmas are there they are surrounded by anthers in such a way that the self pollination is ensured and no outside pollen grain can come inside the flower and do the cross pollination so this is also a mechanism where the stigmas they are surrounded by anthers in such a way that it promotes self pollination and such situation is found in tomato and brinjal in tomatoes and brinjals these are the crops where the position of the flower where the stigmas are surrounded by the anthers happens and this position also or this condition also ensures a perfect self pollination and the development of the seed takes place only through the self pollination mechanism and in some legumes the stamens and stigmas are surrounded by the petals okay in some of the legumes it also happens like the stamens and stigmas they are surrounded by petals okay the petals surround them in such a way that a self pollination is ensured examples like legumes like green gram black gram soybean chickpea and pea so these are the legumes where the position of flower position of anthers this mechanism is involved to promote self pollination and the development of the seed takes place only through self pollination is ensured okay so uh, today we have studied about the different mechanisms which promote self pollination so here i will complete the today's topic thank you